in a planet called Earth, where on this magical night, in a continent and in a country, in a city, in a neighborhood, well, inside a house and on a bed, God, this is going great, isn't it? You closed your eyes and began to drift off the sleep, but something unexpected happened. You started to feel your soul leaving your body to embark on a journey through the cosmos, and I, the narrator, will be your guide, your protector, your companion on this journey through the unknown, where we will explore new worlds, we will meet fascinating characters, and we will discover the secrets of the universe. Alright, okay, I'm, I'm a bit overly dramatic, it's in my nature, but before we begin I... What? What exactly do you mean with a voice in your head? You're not going insane, are you? Oh, you mean me? No, I can assure you, I'm not a voice in your head. Calm down, it's me. Greetings. Greetings, traveller. <laughs> First time? I suppose so. <laughs> you were quite scared there. Well, oh, this? This here? <laughs> yeah. I assume this form. Because you are in quite an unknown situation, it can be scary as we just noticed. Uh, and your subconscious searched into your mind and remember the animated movies from your childhood yes how you felt safe how you felt happy watching them yes i'm usually just a voice i don't i don't have a face or a body but it's quite nice to have a face for once and fingers fingers and ears Oh, don't be scared with all of this. I would say, think of it as a vacation. Yes, a vacation for the soul. Yeah, and I will be your tour guide. Yeah, it's my cosmic function. My job, as you say, in your world. Yes, out of curiosity, how did you achieve such a deep level of sleep, allowing your soul to leave your body and come all the way here? Guided meditation, perhaps? Mm, maybe some breathing exercises, counting to a thousand? A, a what? Could you repeat that for me once more? A S M R A S M R Oh, now that you say I did hear about this, there was quite a lot of people recently arriving here that mentioned this ASMR thing. Quite intriguing. Oh, it was absolute chaos in here. We had to run so much to grab those which were driving away into nebulous and distant stars, yeah. But this gives me an idea, yeah, this, right here, this, <laughs> it's still funny, I'm trying to get used to this. <laughs> well, I think I have the perfect place for you to travel to. Yes, let's go to an animated universe. There is one. 
There is one, yes. Sounds like the perfect place for your first time astral projecting, dream walking. There are many names. I just like to call it adventure. Yeah. I want you to look in here. Yes. Look at it. Yes. Pay attention to it. Breathe in slowly. Breathe in. And breathe out. Yes, imagine that you are stepping into the colorful landscapes and the fantastical realms of animations. Yes, are you ready? But first, first, a word of caution, beware. This is not a fairy tale, no. This is a world. It's full of adventures and dangers, and it's up to you to navigate it. Yes, I can only interfere so far. Okay, <laughs> so look in here again. Look there. That's it. Focus. Focus. And follow my voice. There we are. <laughs> welcome. Yes, welcome my friend. To the animated world. <sighs> take a moment, take a moment to get used to the sights and the sounds around you. Mm. <laughs> this is a place where animated movies come to life. The possibilities are endless and we are in a movie studio intriguing huh. this world seems to have developed the same passion for storytelling using the seventh art i encourage you to explore meet new people and make new friends. Yeah. But beware. Your time here is limited. Yes. Your time here it will interfere in the connection between your soul and your body. As time runs, 
it will become more fragile. So it's important to be cautious. The longer you stay here, the greater the risk for your connection. To return safely to your own world, you will need to find ways to relax and get into a deep sleep once more. But let the peaceful surroundings, the calming sounds, guide you back to your own reality. Yes. That being said, I think you will have an hour or so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I can't resist. I have to look around as well. I will leave my voice with you, okay? Well, I was not hoping for much fun anyway. Yeah. Um, but I will take my eyes for a little adventure. It's my first time in here as well. Oh, and by the way, you still look the same. This might come as a surprise to most people here. I can't wait to hear how this turns out. <laughs> okay, stay well. I will see you very, very soon. And so it began. The adventures of narrator and the protagonist. Venturing into new worlds, meeting fascinating people, and others not so much. But in the end, there were no mysteries to be found, only people with funny faces, and others not so much. But all that is good also has a bad side. Just try to act normal, right? Stop right there. My friend, <laughs> is that a condition that you have? Is it contagious? Well, I'm afraid I must um, insist that you pay a visit to the doctor over there. Yes. <laughs> it's not negotiable at all. Well, I must insist you go. Either that, or I could call the police. Ah, I knew you would come to your senses. It will be very quick. Just go see the doctor, have a checkup. Then, I will consider allowing you to walk around. It sounds good. Alright, I'll see you. An unasked for meeting with the doctor was in order, either for the best or the worst. Hello, I'm Dr. Nathan. No one told me that this was something so serious. Um, but pardon me, pardon me. My apologies, I was thrown off there for a moment. I saw this paperwork here. I got a chance to briefly read it, but unfortunately I have not finished quite yet. And of course I can see that we have some differences, shall I say. However, I believe I can help you, I, but I'd like to run a few tests before I do that. Now, I need you to fill out Briefly, few questions here. So, home address. You prefer a pronoun? Mm -hmm. This is our insurance waiver, of course. Uh, you could go ahead and just sign this uh, quickly as well. It is fantastic. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So, I may just write down a few. Observations here. Now, we finished our paperwork. So I'm going to just quickly put this here. 
Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I see. I hear everything sounds normal here. But that sounds a bit confusing. I apologize for that. That uh, will change things here. Let's go ahead and just take a temperature reading here. See if we can't figure out uh, what the problem is. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take a temperature reading. Everything seems normal there, 98.6. That's very interesting. Next, I have this tuning fork here. I like to test your hearing because you have very unique shaped ears that I believe unlike anything I have ever seen. So. Do you hear that? to take a quick sample. There it is here. Put this here in the trash. Now this here, I'm gonna just gently massage your ear, gently. to just run a quick eye exam. Again, your pupils are very small. Your eyes are just generally, it looks about 50% smaller. So I'd like you to just quickly follow this light here for just a brief second here. Now I'm gonna move it in. I'm just gonna watch your pupils here. Mm-hmm. Move it this way. Move it this way. And just one more time. Okay, I see. All right. That's very interesting. Just the way your pupils react and just the colors. It's very, uh, it, it's very unique. I've never seen anything like it, anything in medical school. I may have to refer this uh, to a specialist. However, I have one last idea. You see, I'm a bit of a technologist. I've been working on a bit of a reality transponder coordination utility tool. I'd like to try it. I have no guaranteed results, but perhaps it could give us some answers. Here we are. Now this tool is still a bit of a work in progress. I see. Now, I'm going to be running this scan, and then I'm going to be using the utility tool arm to get a better sense, a remote sense. Maybe what's happening here, perhaps it's a glitch in the matrix or a glitch in the reality continuum. Now, just one moment here. Okay, that looks about right. Just one moment here, and let me see if I can get some results here. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, I have one last tool. This is the arm. Now, this is best used as a scanning tool. Very high. It's scanning. One more scan. Interesting. So, based on those results, it's quite inconclusive. Well, I believe I have found the problem. Based on the results of my machine, I have found that actually you have somehow traveled through the reality continuum into a world that is parallel, but not your own. 
You see, when I scanned your particles, it showed a DNA mismatch, which somehow seems to be from another dimension. Now, I'm not a physicist, so I don't know the details, but you're bound to see some things you've never seen before. And so, my alien friend, what I am saying is for you to interact in this dimension, this reality, right? whatever reality you came from, you see the reality particles of this dimension and the antiparticles of your dimension will interact and cancel out any of the effects you may have suffered going through this portal. Now, this all depends on whether or not you allow yourself to relax, because of course, if you hold on too strongly, the connection, the quantum connection between these particles will be too great. And my machine is saying that you need a significant amount of force to create this breakage. And so before you leave, I'm gonna go ahead and have you sign this insurance waiver right here. I can just have you sign a dot there. That's our second one there. Thank you, of course, because my machine is not quite FDA approved, if you know what I mean. So that all said, I believe that you are, there is hope and we shall see. Enjoy your travels in this reality, my friend. And take care, of course, you can pay on your way out. Both the narrator and the protagonist walked out of the office, but only one of them was extremely worried with the sentence, you can pay on your way out. Well, I hope you can find the money for that bill. Anyway, both continued to explore until their path was blocked by even a greater threat than the Doctor. It was a casting director. No, no, no. I told you. We know somebody who is fluent in Elvish, not someone who studied it in college. I, well, I gotta go. Hi, have, um, have we met? Pleasure. Um, where did you just come from? Don't tell me. You must be one of those new 8K super high-tech CGI faces. Oh, the VFX department must be so proud. What? You're from a, a, a different universe? You're telling me that's, that's just your face? Huh. Have you ever wanted to be in a movie? Well, you're in, you're in the right place. If so, let me tell you, because I have been searching for our next star, and I think you might be it. Oh, don't, don't panic. Uh, just... Would you mind if I touched your face? I, I've just never seen anything like it. It's... Oh, wow. That texture. Do you moisturize? Hmm. Wow. Mm. Turn your head to the side for me. Uh, other side. Okay. Well, I think we may have found our new protagonist. Oh, yes. Oh, our audience would absolutely swoon over you. Now, are you, are you all right? Is it, is it like a medical thing or? Oh, you were just seen by the doctor. And you got the okay. Oh my God, fantastic then. Well, you know what? I have like a brief moment here. Do you mind if I just get a quick measurement. It'll be really fast. Just a, a quick, a quick little one. Okay, don't panic. It's just stand still. Okay, stand still. <sighs> the costume department is barely going to have to alter anything. I just, listen. The person we currently have in the role is, is fine. They're great. I, I casted them myself. However, I would be the worst casting director in the world if I didn't convince you to be on the big screen in one of our amazing, fantastic movies. What do you say? I can have the contract drawn up by the afternoon. Hmm. 
You drive a hard bargain. Okay. Okay. I can give you your own trailer. Private masseuse. I can get you reservations at any restaurant you want. With guests. Okay. Okay. Um, what's your name? Uh-huh. How, how old are you? Wow. And, uh, what's your, what's your astrological sign? Okay. <laughs> Sagittarius. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, do you have any current representation? Interesting. Okay. Gorgeous. What's your Instagram following like? I'll have to give you a, a little follow myself. Okay. Well. Excuse me for one moment. Jeremy? Jeremy, I need you to get over here, stat. Okay? I don't care what you're doing, you need to drop it. Your grandmother? She's already had 89 birthdays. Cut the cake and get over here. I've got a new star. I can see that you're not fully convinced. But I know who you can talk to. You should go look around. Talk to some of our current stars. They'll tell you how amazing it is here. All the amenities. What it's like to be famous. And that could be you. Do it. Keep exploring. Everyone uh, should be super excited to talk to you. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions, but uh, I have to go see about a dog who knows how to tango. <laughs> Call me. And so they continued to be fascinated by fascinating people, and others not so much. But what they could not foresee was that things were about to get fishy. Wait, wait, wait. Where do you think you are going? You want to get in there? You're not going to put a, a mask on? You're going to need to. Unless you know how to breathe on the water. Do you? I suppose no. Yes. Well, um, take one of those. Yes, they're gonna help you breathe. And then feel free to go right in. Yeah. some sleep. Well, I hope that you feel at home here. I have lots of treasures from where you live. Would you like to see some? They're my favorite things in the whole world. I'd love to show you some of my gadgets and gizmos. Just look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? So many artifacts from the human world. They fascinate me. My friend Scuttle helps me with identifying them all. Like this one. I think I'm a Bob. I got 20 of these. It's not my rarest item. And a dingle hopper. I just recently got one of those. You want to see? 
Look. Isn't it awesome? I'll use it right now. I've been finding it really useful. My hair gets so tangled really quickly swimming around down here. It's just perfect for getting rid of all of those tangles. Would you like to try too? Sure. Oh, you've never used a tingle hopper in this way before? This is not what it's for? Hmm. Scuttle must have been having a very sleepy moment. He's usually such an expert on these things. He spends most of his time around humans. Well, I'm glad you still like it used in this way. I love it. I think it's my favorite thing yet. There's also this one. With just two prongs, but... I'm not sure what this is used for. It takes a lot longer to brush through my hair with this one. Oh, I got some just today as well from Scuttle. There are these. Aren't they fascinating? They're called bloops. Scuttle says that they're for helping you to balance, but I don't see how. He didn't explain that. Maybe you put them in your ears? Or right up close? Like this? I don't know. But they sure do sound nice. I have a snarplat that makes music too. But I think that these are my favorite instruments. So far at least. Much more pleasant than the snarplat. What do you think? Are you playing a role in the movie too? Oh, how wonderful. You're gonna meet so many nice people today. Well, we better go get ready for the set. I wish you the best of luck. And I hope you can come back soon. I'm sure I will have many more objects in my collection to show you then. Bye for now. Can't seem to get them right. Are you here to run lines too? No? Are you from the makeup department? I keep smudging my makeup. It's a nervous habit. No. Are you looking for my sister? I know. You found my blonde streak, didn't you? I don't know how it got untangled, but 
I seem to have lost it. I kind of need it for my next scene. No, of course not. <sighs> Mom. What's your name then? Good to meet you. I'm Anna, and obviously we're shooting a movie here. I am a little nervous. It's kind of my first time. It is for my sister too, but she seems to be a little cooler about it, if you will. Well, at least if you're not working on the movie, then that takes the pressure off of me a little bit. I really cannot remember my lines to save my life. So, how did you wander in here then? Really? That sounds like a fascinating tale. Would you mind sitting down for a little bit? I'd love to hear it. Yes, good distraction. Keeps the nerves from getting too, well, nervous. So tell me a little bit about where you've been. I see. What an interesting phenomenon. So where are you from originally? Mm-hmm. Really? Huh. So how are you feeling about your experience so far then? And I take it that your experience might get even just a little bit more bright when you do see my sister. She's around here somewhere. I imagine you'll run into her. Quite literally, I think that the only time I can get a hold of her is when I run into her. She's always being taken from one end of the studio to the other. Makeup, hair, wardrobe, you know the deal. I got kind of lucky, and they just threw my hair in some braids, although the blonde streak, that one ran away from me, but I got a nice warm cloak, I got a little outfit, I am still waiting, I spilled something on the, uh, on the corset, the stays, so, waiting on that, <laughs> yeah, they had to push back my scene a little bit, but, I didn't know the lines anyway, so it worked out. Yes. So I apologize. I'm going on and on about myself. How are you doing? Yeah, well, I know I asked about, about your little trip, but I didn't ask how you're doing. It's got to be... Well, I know I'd be confused. Maybe a little excited, sure, but a little confused, and I wonder how I would get back, but if you find that you need a friend or you're a little lost, you can certainly come back here. This is my spot to run lines. It's a little, it's a little out of the way, and I kind of like how quiet it is over here. Yeah, if you want to just sit for, for a minute, I'd be more than happy to just sit with you. Take a little breather. A little rest. Sometimes when the hustle and bustle of the stage gets a little too much for me, I like to just close my eyes and take a deep breath, or three, or ten. Oh, just take a deep breath in, and out. Deep breath in, and out. Deep breath in. And out. And then when you open your eyes, everything gets a little starry and just a little blurry around the edges and it almost feels, it feels magical, doesn't it? Your body just feels a little looser, more relaxed. And you can do that as many times as you need to. Close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and out. Deep breath in, 
and out. Deep breath in. And out. And then just let your eyes open. I love that. I love when the lights go all starry. It's my favorite part. It's hard to see things when you have so many lights on you all the time. But when you're doing it on purpose, it's a lot more fun. <laughs> I guess that does sound kind of funny, doesn't it? Yes. Well, I think I'll probably have to get back to my lines. I've got... Ooh, I don't have much time. Wardrobe should be here soon with a replacement stay. So, it was absolutely wonderful to meet you. Alright, I'll see you later. As they continued to explore, they noticed that they had started to get sleepy. All of the people around here had this particular characteristic of being very powerful in the art of ASMR. Perhaps after all, there is still hope for you falling asleep and going back to your own world. Come over here. Come on, come over. Yeah, you. Get a little bit closer. That's right. How are you? Let me introduce myself. My name is Vanellope Von Schweetz. <laughs> What's your name? That's a really nice name, but not as nice as my name. <laughs> so here's the deal. Okay. They're making a movie about me, which is awesome. And I'm really excited about it. But you know what? It gets really boring in between filming. Like, I'm just hanging around bored. All I've got to amuse myself is candy. I'm just sitting, eating candy. I'm bored. So why don't you keep me company? Maybe we can share some sweets together. That'd be fun. So tell me a little bit about you. Oh, cool. Nice, and you're enjoying looking around the studios? Great. Well, I'm supposed to be a very feisty person, apparently. They say I'm feisty and very funny, which I would definitely agree. I am funny, <laughs> and I do like a good adventure. I am very adventurous. But you know what I love best ever to do? race. I love racing. It's so much fun. I mean, it is exciting doing this movie and all, but I'd rather be racing. Anyway, so do you want to share some candy? I have got some really good things here. They're so tasty. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> so first of all, we have these. Strawberry laces. One of my favorites. Look, you can even see them in my hair. <laughs> Do you like these? Okay, I'll give you this. We can share. It's fine. I've got some lollipops here including this big lollipop. Do you like to race? Oh, okay. Well, I really love to race. Maybe I've said that before. <laughs> but I just love it, you know? The adrenaline rush. It's so much fun. Would you like a lollipop? Okay. You can have this one. Also got these two here. Okay. You just want the one lolly? I'll have these two then. I've got a candy watch. It's a watch. But it's made of candy. <laughs> How cool is that?
Oh, these are some of my favorites. Rainbow Drops. <laughs> They're great. Hey, have you seen my friend Ralph anywhere? He gonna wreck it. <laughs> Actually, like, there are so many people you can see if you walk around the studio. You should do that. After you've obviously spent some time with me. Just wander around. See who you can find. I'm gonna open these. Hey, maybe I could feed you. <laughs> Open wide. <laughs> oh, these are great as well. Flying sources. you like some fizzers? These are really nice. They're very, well, fizzy. <laughs> there you go. So, what else have I got? Okay. Twisty twirly. Fondant filled candy. Hey, look, thanks for hanging out with me. You should probably look around the studios now. See who else you can talk to. I'll just sit here and have the candy and, yeah. <laughs> Dream of racing. I love racing. Have I said that? Have I told you that I really like to race? I have. Okay. Okay. Enjoy your time at the studio. At this point of our adventure, I should have better things to say than... The explorers continued to explore, or that fascinating people were fascinating them. But to be very honest, I had nothing else to talk about. And I had lied in my curriculum saying that I was a professional narrator. seen anything like you and I'm a sock yeah what are you trying to to find your your way um trying to find a light in the end of the tunnel you could say oh I know where there are lights I know I know lights over there right there yeah just follow the lights right there yes Mm. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's nice as well, though, a bit of pink. Mm. A little bit of green screen. Mm. That's quite nice. Oh, hi there. Sorry, I'm just um, playing about with different lighting effects. How are you anyway? Yay, welcome to the animated film set. Um, I mean, is there anything I can do for you? Do you want just learning as you sort of go? Okay, so um, 
I am the lighting and the um, microphone kind of um, expert. <laughs> so I was just basically playing around with some colours um, for backgrounds and things like that. But um, the director is quite rigid, so you know, I'm just, that's why I like to make sure everything is perfect. Um, so, you know, and, um, yeah, just kind of, yeah, I don't always get things right though. I'm not perfect by no means, but, um, you know, no one is, are they? So, well, apart from the director, obviously. What I like to do, because the sound really is like most important to me, is just um, do some cool sounds and um, just like, you know, so I bring some things on set with me just to make sure everything is crisp and, you know. I love sounds. <laughs> what do you think? There is actually a pair of headphones you can wear just so you can really hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sound is very crispy. Just a sponge. I wouldn't say it's your average sponge because it sounds great. What do you think? Sorry, I got a bit zoned out then. Yeah? It takes such skill and hard work to pull something like that off, you know? Mm -hmm. Also, a really good one as well is a bit of... I mean, how does that sound in your headphones? Pretty good, right? Mmm, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think the director will like what I've done with the place, you know, the lights and everything? Mm-hmm. So the actors stand here and just do their thing and then I'm just like out of the picture because clearly not important enough to be in the scene. Just kidding, I'm not an actor, so yeah. <laughs> so, uh. Really nice to see you. It's so great to see a normal person around here, you know. All these animated assholes, just <laughs> including myself, but 
Yeah, anyway. <laughs> no, you have fun. You enjoy yourself. It's totally good here. It's lovely. It's like a big happy family. Dysfunctional, but... <laughs> Fine. Arset, what are you doing in my swamp? Oh, there you are. Are you gonna make donkey? I don't really know what I'm doing. No. They say they were looking for a, a replacement for Shrek. But I think I'm telling you a terrible job. You think as well? I knew it. Damn it, donkey! But you go that way. That way, that way you go. <laughs> I said right over there, not there, over there, okay? Okay, good, good. <sighs> Sorry about that. Yeah, welcome to the studio. I'm the director here. And don't take this the wrong way, but you look different. I don't know what it is, but you look like you're not from around here. Where are you from? Ah, yes. Well, it is quite a magical place here, to say the least. If I say so myself, it feels like utterly magical. I don't know why I use that word, but I don't know. I've heard about your land and people look at ours as some kind of magical place, and I've sort of internalized that. Yeah, I kind of have to as a director. I gotta put myself into that kind of mindset. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's nice and friendly. I said get down from there. I said get down from there. Okay? We're not dealing with that yet. Go help with the lights. We need help with the lights. The set is not looking good lighting-wise. Yeah, we need some help with that. Okay? Yeah, sorry about that. It's just another day in the office that is the studio. It's crazy here. So who have you met so far? Oh. Cool, cool. You met a lot of the actors yet? Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Do I act? I used to, but I found that directing is just a hell of a lot easier for me. I know a lot of people find acting better and it puts you in the limelight, but it was really getting to me and I thought, if I'm going to be in the limelight, I'm going to be by name more than my face, if that makes sense. Like, I have no intent on being like Steven Spielberg of your world. Yeah, that guy is just as much in the limelight as the actors, but I prefer to take it a little step back and, you know, be a bit more chill. A little bit more of a chill life. What are you doing? No, no, we're not getting on set yet. I'm talking to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, be right with you, okay? Okay, study your lines, make sure you got them up to par. Yeah, I know what it's like to forget your lines. I was an actor too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, best people to work with. You just, you just gotta keep them on their toes just a little bit. And then everything falls into place. They know what they're doing, and at the times that they don't, then you gotta just, you know, put them in the right direction. That's why I'm a director. Just put them in the right direction. That's all there is to it. Mm hmm Yeah. No, I don't have one of those cool fold-up chairs that I never use those because they're so uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't like them. I don't really sit down that much at all anyway. When I'm on set, I prefer to stand and walk around a little bit. Obviously not when we're rolling, because when we're rolling, I got to keep as still as possible and quiet as possible. It's the way it is. But yeah, take a look around the set. Just be sure that when we start filming, that you get behind the cameras, be as quiet as you possibly can, because, you know, got to be quiet on the set. That's the law. It's the law of film, quiet on the set. You know the trail. Yeah. Well, we're going to start shooting in about 
five, ten minutes, depending on how long these people take to set up the lights. It's just bugging the crap out of me, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll get it figured out, then we'll start rolling. You get to see the film in action, front row center, before everybody else does. That's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. It was great to meet you. I will see you around the set. Take care. Yeah. Oh, um, hello. Um, are we back? We're back? Oh, sorry. I was just finishing my coffee. So, um, the explorations continued. Uh, what? Oh, uh, I don't really know. I don't know. I, uh, I was just born yesterday. Yeah, the, the VFX department. They do some tests. They have a new model. I was the 2K version. They already have a 4K. I think they are making an AK version. It's your first time here at the nerd school, isn't it? I mean, the Io Ishioka Institute. <laughs> Haven't seen you around. Okay, I see. We have to be quiet, they have a course over there. Oh, stay behind the line, please, for your own safety. I'm working on something quite challenging here, doing some serious programming on this droid. That's Baymax, by the way. He's a medical healthcare companion. Yeah, a robotic nurse, if you will. He'll be able to conduct over 10,000 medical procedures. It scans your body and treats your specific issues if necessary. Cool, right? on the outside with a super light carbon skeleton works with hyperspectral cameras and killer actuators we machined them right here in house he can lift a thousand pounds yeah I hope he 
is going to help a lot of people. That would be cool. meeting you. Come around sometime and look at the progress if you like. Cool. See you. Hello, how you must um, I must be here for the sketching, presumably. Um, yes, uh, I myself am a rather magnificent artist, but I can't work miracles, so I, I can't promise you the world, I'm afraid, given what I'm working with. Well, I don't have anyone else to sketch, so I may as well sketch you now. Um, no, you have time. You have time. Of course you have. I'll do it for free as well. Um, and a small fee, very reasonable fee as well. If you could do a pose for me, um, something not too dramatic, perhaps. Or something like that, of course. Now. Hmm. So, we'll start with your visage. Hmm. That means your body. Yes, we'll start with the body. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I love it. Just drawing um, your body here and your clothing. It is looking quite magnificent, if I do say so myself. Yeah. Happy little accidents. So there we go. Art is like a cloud. Have you ever seen a cloud that was the wrong shape? No, of course not. So you don't have to be too careful with your art. In fact, if anything, your art can be enhanced by happy little accidents. So what we've got here is a happy little accident. I'm going to frame it for you. Frames are extra. Okay, very good. Just give me two seconds. Now here is your art. Um, I would prefer that you looked at it after you painted. Yes, yes, thank you, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, yes. Oh no, just because otherwise it influences the style somewhat, I find. So that's the only reason. So here is your um, beautiful artwork here. You can see yourself, my son here. And in general, I, I think you'll agree, it's a masterpiece. So here you go. You can take that, of course. And um, okay, now if you could just please... Uh, vacate the premises. I'm probably have another client coming soon. Uh, another. Ah, here we go. Uh, please come, come, sit down. Uh, you must be here for the sketching. Right, so I hear you are here for a mustache on your boat race. Is that right? What do you mean? 
Uh, can't be me, mate. Firstly, I don't look anything like a fella. I've seen him before myself. Secondly, I can't do any art whatsoever. What do you mean he couldn't either? Well, thirdly, look, we're on a limited budget, okay? So I'll just leave it, leave it. Right, now, let's have a little look at you. What type of moustache would fit your belt race? Well, see what we've got here. Right. We've got this one here. I call this one the classy gentleman. So I do. This is a fantastic uh, moustache. You could probably wear this if you were a, a RAF wannabe or if you were playing like uh, a, 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 a criminal mastermind from something that wasn't too good. You know, like a, like a more budget film. Not, we're not talking James Bond here because I think it would be a little bit more stylish than that. Right, I'm just going to put it up against your face. Looks nice. Do you want to check yourself in the mirror? Maybe we'll try another one. Right, we'll try another one, girl. Okay. Right, I got this one. This one's more of a sort of a war, sort of strange straight one. Um, we could use this for perhaps a wheeler dealer, someone who is a little bit, uh, a little bit, ah, uh, doesn't mind selling dodgy staff, moving them on to the next client, that sort of thing. Try that against your face. Well, I don't love it, if I'm honest with you. Right, I've got the old, sort of arrogant old man type moustache here. Brigadier General. That sort of thing. You know what I'm talking about? Sort of like military top brass, that sort of thing. Uh, streaks in there. Let's have a look. All 100% human air as well, by the way. This one might be good. This one we call a walrus moustache. Yeah, it's quite stylish. Just uh, sort of henchman. Henchman in a cowboy film, that sort of thing. Maybe a uh, grizzle cop from Victorian times. Something of that nature. Well, I've got the next one. Perhaps next one here we've got is... Uh, not even sure what this one is. Quite stylish, got the tips on there. So obviously, very stylish, very fantastically stylish. Uh, you like that one? Yeah. Okay, I think you'll love the next one then. Next one we call the double or shoe moustache uh, or the triangle. Sometimes called a triangle because of its uh, triangular nature. What do you think of that? Right. This one here. We'll call it the Poirot. You know, Hercule Poirot, he, uh, he's that detective uh, thing, isn't he, on, uh, on the BBC, he's uh, written by uh, something Christie, yeah, he's a stylish fella, very wise, got a massive brain and stuff, yeah, let's try it on. Like that one? Let me go grab some glue. Right, old fashioned glue. Stick it on here. Stick it on here. Got to make sure it never comes off. Well, not never, but you know, got to be able to stick on there for a couple of weeks at least, don't it? Don't want it coming off in the shower or anything like that. Hmm. Well, I suppose we could make it a little more temporary. Um, I can take some off here. How long were you thinking? A day. Okay, a day it is. Right, let's stick the alpira on there. Let's just get it out. Right, sticking that on there. That looks lovely, that does. Really goes well with our outfit. Yeah. All right, sling your Got other customers coming in now. Yeah. 
Scrubbed up, lovely. Right. Oh, good evening, madam. Come here for a fake moustache, have we? Okay, if you just take a seat. Uh, oh, wow. Hi. That is an incredible uh, makeup job that you have. I love the costuming. What production are you part of? Oh, really? That is wild. I've never heard of anything like that. So, where you come from, everyone looks like, like you? Wow. Well, you seem a little bit, um, nervous. It's okay. I mean, I get that if I were to go to sleep and wake up in a completely different universe, I'd probably be pretty freaked too, but I'm sure it'll all work itself out. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, you picked a great place to be, mm -hmm. I mean, you went, you wound up in one of the uh, biggest movie studios around. <laughs> my name, let me, oh, yeah, uh, my name is mm, Marie. Mm -hmm. And I am a personal assistant to one of the biggest stars around. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, am on my break right now. It's been a really crazy day. Yeah. I would tell you who I work for, but I am um, obligated under contract not to uh, give out any information at all about boss. Mm -hmm. They're very private. Mm -hmm. And a little intense, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sure it'll all get figured out and you'll go right back to your dimensions. So don't worry. Uh, in the meantime, so yeah, it's pretty crazy being a personal assistant to a big movie star. <laughs> But, um, you know, it keeps me busy. Yes, I was just currently uh, taking some notes about rearranging their schedule because, yeah, they're always changing their mind about the itinerary. Did you, um, get any of the, um, great snacks, though? Yeah, so, mm -hmm, right over there, there's, um, some amazing snacks. Also, coffee. Uh, soda, juice, whatever you like. Yeah. So, tell me, uh, tell me about yourself and your world. Mm hmm Do you actually mind if I take some notes? Because this is such a fascinating, um, fascinating to hear about. And, um, my... My, my boss, they're looking actually for some new ideas um, to write their own script, so would that be okay? Okay, thank you. You're so nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just ask you a few questions if that's okay. Great. Um, so how exactly did you wind up here um, in this different universe, as you say? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you said you, this happened after you went to sleep. Um, was there anything unusual about when you went to sleep before this happened? Anything different? Did you take something or watch anything in particular? Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. So nothing really out of the ordinary? Wow. Hmm. All right. And has this ever happened to you before? Not that you know of. Okay. And when you first woke up in this different universe, am I the first person you met? Or, uh, okay, I see. Oh. 
And do you have any um, ideas how this could have happened? Is this something that often happens where you come from? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's okay. I mean, any of this information you're giving me is super insightful. And I can, like, kind of fill in the blanks and perhaps uh, create a script for my boss. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I actually, I'm on a short break right now. So I have to get back to work. Yeah. But, um, like I said, be sure to get some snacks. They're pretty decent. And I would just walk around the studio or you know, wherever you end up next, and just keep asking around. Someone's bound to know how to help. Mm -hmm. It was so nice to meet you. I hope you have a wonderful day, and um, find your way home, okay? Bye. And so, after a lot of fascinating people, and others not so much, the adventures continue their explore. Wait. What is that? Oh, this feels different. It's cold in here. I believe that it's a portal. I can read your mind, you know. I know you are thinking about going through it. You... No. No. Oh, God. Alright. Narrator and protagonist found themselves in a completely new place. They had left the studio and they were now lost. Great. Do, do you like what you just did? Well, we probably should try to find our way back to my body now. I'm sorry. I didn't hear anyone approach. Where are my manners? I'm Elsa. It's nice to meet you. And what was your name? Lovely. I take it you're not from around here, are you? Did you happen to get lost? Oh, I see. I've been following that situation and I find it quite fascinating. So, I wonder how you were able to travel here through the different worlds. Oh, so if you fall asleep, you think you can get back? Well, sure, I suppose I could try to help you. Have you met anyone else? so far. I see. Those are lovely individuals. And what were they able to do like to help you? I see. Okay. Well, I tend to stay here alone. I like my solitude, but I'm surprised you're doing so well. For most people, it's a little Hold up here. Well, let's see if I can help you. Or at least send you on to someone else who can better assist you so you don't freeze up here. <laughs> no. I'll let you in a little secret. I do have some magic powers. I'm able to control ice, snow, water. That's why I leave these gloves on. But maybe there's a way I can use the snow and everything to help maybe do some kind of hypnosis and send you off to sleep. Why don't we give it a try? Guess it can't hurt, can it? Just follow. Follow 
Are you feeling a little more sleepy? Okay. Well then, suppose I should let you run off to the next person. Maybe they can better assist you. I'm glad I was able to help get you at least a little bit more sleep. I hope you're able to travel home quickly. I can understand how scared I've been away from home for a pretty long time, too. Here. I hope you at least enjoy your stay here for the brief time that you're here. Take these as a souvenir. That's okay. I'm hoping I won't need them anymore. Have a good night and safe travels. All right, I'll confess. I'm kind of happy that we got lost. I was enjoying that ice magic quite a bit. Who would have guessed magic is real in this world? No, I didn't know that. Oh, hey, who are you? I'm sorry, I don't mean to stare at you, but you really don't look familiar. And you also look very different. Not in a mean way, I just... You're from another universe? Oh my gosh. Have you met Flynn yet? Right? Yeah, he's over there in the corner. Annoying the horse? <sighs> they still don't get along for some reason. Ridiculous, but anyway, would you actually mind if I drew you? Would that be okay? It's just your face is so beautiful and so different. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Okay, so just hold still for me, okay? Perfect. Huh. Well... If you do come from another universe, another world, does that mean you've probably seen a lot of things, right? Huh. That sounds so much fun. Do you think I could join you? No? Oh, maybe another time. Okay. Sure. Okay. Let me get the ear. Both sides. Good. Okay. Get your hair. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. This place is beautiful, right? I know. I'm very, very grateful that I finally get to experience all of this, you know?
good. Just hold still for me. Okay. Don't want to mess anything up. Perfect. Mm. Right. Let me put a flower in your hair. Yeah. That looks nice. What do you think? You like it? Do you want to keep it? Sure. I don't mind. Let me just... safe, okay? Don't let anybody take it from you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> this is so exciting. Will you be staying for longer? Not too much? Well, I'm sure you have a lot to look at, a lot to see, and a lot to experience, and <sighs> it's probably a very, very magical experience, I guess. Do you know where you're going next? Not yet? Oh. Well, I do wish you a lot of fun. And lots of luck. Hopefully you don't meet anything scary. And no. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. Wonderful. Okay. Um, well. Let me think. Uh, what else could I show you? What else could I... You'll have a look around? Okay, well, welcome. <laughs> um, I would definitely recommend you do some dancing here. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's lots of fun here. You're gonna love it, I promise. Sure, okay. If you have to hurry, that's totally fine. Well, it was wonderful meeting you. And, um... I hope to see you again one day. Okay. Oh, it's, it's Rapunzel, by the way. I never introduced myself. So sorry. What's your name? Well, it's a wonderful name. Oh, I'm really glad I got to meet you. Okay. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay. Goodbye. Well, it seems like most people around are quite friendly in these new kingdoms, which is good news for us. <clears throat> the Rita and protagonist continue to explore new worlds and fascinating people. Hi there. I'm Tinkerbell. What brings you to Pixie Hollow? How strange. So, you went to sleep, and found yourself here, in my world, and you met, and you met, Jingles, and now you must get back to sleep to get home. Hmm, well, I might be able to help. I am a Tinker Fairy. Tinkers fix things. Yeah, a tinker. It's my talent. All fairies have talents. Yes, well, you have water talent fairies, light talent fairies, let's see, there's animal talent fairies, and there's garden talent fairies. We all have a unique talent to help bring upon the changing of the seasons in the mainland. I mean, I should say, your land. So as a tinker, I tinker things. Well, it's a lot more than just pots and kettles, you know. Tinker fairies help other talent fairies to help with the changing of the seasons. Mm -hmm. So, we invent things. We make things like, like baskets to carry all of the snowflakes for the coming of winter. Mm. We just make things easier for everyone. So I think I can 
help you with this sleep thing and make it a little easier for you to get back home. Sure. Let's see. What makes me feel sleepy? Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes my light talent fairy friend named Iridesa plays with the light. Yeah, she makes the light move around slowly and gently and it makes me feel very sleepy. Mm. Now, I'm not a light talent fairy, but I do have this lost thingy. leaves. Yes, well, there's so many of them. By the time I get to around 700, I'm fast asleep. Yeah, I have some leaves here that we could count together. Perfect. Let's see. We'll start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven,
And so, the adventures continued. But the narrator was starting to get really, really sleepy. And so should the protagonist. Because the time here is almost ending. Oh, wow. You scared me. I've never seen you around here. <sighs> really? Wow. So you traveled quite far, haven't you? Wow. Oh, I'm a makeup, by the way. Yeah, you are in Burke. How did you get all the way here? Wow, oh, I see you. Wow, you did right. They tried to get us. Well, they did, actually. We made three movies, and then they want us to be there forever. Yeah, like make a hundred a thousand seasons of these animated series. It's really crazy. You did well. But where are you going? Well, you can go anywhere like that. Yeah. I... I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, if you want, um, I can give you a ride. In a dragon. Oh, don't make that face. It's a dragon. We all here know how to ride dragons. You've never ride a dragon before? Well, it's going to be very, very nice. I, I promise you. A bit scary as well, but nothing to worry about. Well, I'm going to get ready myself and I'll send you to Astrid, all right? Astrid will gear you up, all right? Um, prepare you for your first dragon ride. I'll meet you here later and we'll fly away, all right? So you must be the traveler I'm supposed to help, huh? Nice to meet you. I'm Astrid. Pickup told me a bit about what's going on with you. So, uh, I suppose you already had to explain to plenty of people what's going on with you. So I'm not gonna ask you. It's not like I'm curious anyway, so... Anyway, I have everything that you could possibly need when it comes to flying a dragon. Is this your first time riding a dragon? Oh boy, you're in for a ride. <laughs> Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. First things first, bracers. These are going to help you protect your wrists. Because it can get a little bit turbulent up there. So you wouldn't want your hands to break off during the flight, right? That's what you're gonna use this for. Your arm, please. There we go. <laughs> Come on, what's with that face? You're going to be riding the most majestic creatures in the world. Or, well, in our world. It's gonna be fine. Ah, you really must have been through quite a lot. I cannot think of any other logical reason for you to not want to ride one of these gigantic monstrous beasts with all those teeth and scales. Oh, I should be more careful with my jokes. Don't worry, they're not actually gonna do anything to you. <laughs> Sorry. They're harmless, really. Does that feel right or is it too tight? No. Then your other arm, please. I was skeptical too, at first. I was convinced that humans and dragons couldn't get along, let alone be friends. But ever since Hiccup brought them 
into our lives like that. Everything's been more exciting, more fun. I'm sure that if you spent more time with them, you would also learn to love them. Alright, but that one's a bit too tight, isn't it? Yeah, I could tell. Hold on. Better? Good. Now, you're also going to need something to give you a little bit of support, especially for your back. For this we have these harnesses. So I will need you to hold up your arms. Very good. suits you just fine. But what's even more important is the rope that we're going to put onto that harness. This is going to make sure that you will not fall from the saddle. It's going to connect the harness to the saddle for safety reasons. You see, dragons sometimes like to have a little Fun. Especially if they can tell that you are riding a dragon for the first time. They like to do things like um, flying upside down. <laughs> the first time I ever rode a dragon, which was Hiccup's Dragon Toothless, uh, he tried to shake me off the entire time. Well, we didn't get along at the time so I understand. <laughs> but if I would have had a rope like this, I would not have felt like I was going to die. <laughs> so these are quite useful to have. Toothless and I get along just fine now, so. And I doubt that you will even need this. I'm sure everything's gonna be fine. But just in case, you know. Hiccup's gonna help you with the rest, so. All I can do now is say goodbye. And I hope that your journey from now on is gonna be safe. Good luck. And so... When things couldn't get more adventurous, narrator and protagonist found themselves with their feet bouncing in the air. They were riding dragons, the most magical sensation of this world. But it didn't take long before the protagonist accidentally fell off the track. And so, they found themselves lost again, in a most dark and mysterious forest. I'm going to 
parties especially that I haven't been invited to <laughs> but the difference little cockroach is that you are not you have a good time? I was... I... I saw so many things I can't even describe. You as well? Yeah, I suppose so. Well, my friend... I'm afraid it's time to say goodbye to the animated world. Yes, we had some wild adventures met some incredible people and explored some true magical places but alas all good things 
must come to an end. Yes. And now, I will help you to go back to sleep. Yes. Oh, some of the people tried to help you? Did they have some, any sort of success? Yes. Well, who would have thought? It seems like the people around here have a natural ASMR gift. Yes. Hmm. Well, I want you to breathe in and out very slowly. Yes. And I want you to feel your body on your bed. Very heavy. Very heavy. The sounds, the colors of the animated world will start to fade away and you'll be back to your own reality very soon. But don't worry, don't worry. The memories of your journey will stay with you. And who knows, maybe someday you will find your way back. You might feel a little sad leaving this world behind, but remember that the true beauty of animated movies is that they never, never truly end. You can watch them again and again and again and find something new each time. So come back, come back to this whenever you want another vacation for yourself and maybe you will see something you've never noticed before. Yeah, and as for me, I will go back to being just a voice. Yeah, having a body is quite exhausting. Yeah, I, I could never have imagined this. I had these things falling in my eyes all the time. I found out that they are called eyelashes. Yeah, and they, they are actually made by the body as some sort of mean to self-sabotage our vision in very important moments. Well, and this big thing here in my face it started to itch so much, so much at one point I felt like pulling it off. But I can't deny, <laughs> it was kind of fun. But now, now my friend, I bid you farewell. It was a fun, fun journey. But now, another journey awaits you in the real world. Well, your real world. <laughs> well, stay well my friend and focus. 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 <laughs>